So if you know what this is uh, without having to look it up, uh, leave a comment below because I had no clue what this is. Yeah, for me, initially, I, I thought, oh, this is, looks like some Da Vinci-esque French laundry-esque thing. So what this is called is a fenachistoscope. And basically what this is, is it was invented in the mid 1800s in France. And it initially was kind of like a gif of that era. So the idea was um, rich people thought this was entertaining and we think we can make this on paper discs for normal people. So what we're viewing is the entire disc which rotates at a certain RPM. Ideally, you would isolate a certain perspective or you know, just the top piece and then you would see an animation. So uh, a recurring theme in AI, uh, especially with the, my friends who are significantly more intelligent than me, is they also seem to have a much greater corpus of uh, history and then also just cool words. And this is a really cool word, as dumb as that sounds. And uh, yeah, but the root of this is cool and I'm gonna get to use some of the classics I studied in high school, which I really haven't used since. Uh, and that is that the basis of the phenachistoscope, which if you pronounce this in Greek closer to right, um, the, the root of this is the Greek word, word um, pina kistikos. And uh, the, the meaning behind this is cool because it, it effectively translates to deceiving or cheating. And uh, towards the end, um, in full, deceiving or cheating of the eye. Uh, which really for us and practical reasons, you could just say is optical deception or optical illusion. And what's interesting is at a high level, a lot of AI uh, is thought provoking and photorealistic as it is, is effectively an illusion. Um, it's such an accurate representation of a perspective that you thought would be impossible to fake that your brain sees it as something real. Um, and if you want to read more into how Philosophers have looked at this, which is not what this video is about. Um, you can look, there's lots of writing that's been, been done on that. Um, the Uncanny Valley is kind of the holy grail of that in recent time. But, uh, but yeah, so there's a really cool kind of historical precedent to what we're talking about today, which is building on something that I think is far more impressive and far more interesting than what Facebook put out uh, with Make a Video yesterday. Uh, this was released yesterday, uh, and I'm starting to realize that I, I'm not an academic, but I, I was talking to a friend of mine last night, and they said that uh, surges of research like this are quite common in the fall. Um, and in this case, it was a bunch of people trying to release and kind of piggyback on the momentum Facebook started uh, with publishing new research. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll link to the Wikipedia page in the description. Uh, the technology is pretty cool. You see basically the technology was a spinning disc. Uh, ironically at the time, one of the bigger challenges was spinning this at a consistent speed. Um, so this is one of the original illustrations um, created by Joseph Platus. And um, yeah, so this is what you'd actually see generally. So you'd isolate one single perspective, which Again, in AI, it's pretty similar. Like, you know, a lot of this generation, especially with the 3D stuff we looked at in a prior video, uh, it was done and validated by restricting perspective, which is integral to this illusion working. And uh, yeah, here's one that has rats, which is kind of cool. I, I think it's cool. Um, yeah, so read this, uh, it, it'll give some insight. And the model we're, we're talking about today is called Fenikai which I, the name is just, the name is cool. And there are a number of reasons I think this is way more interesting than what Facebook has released. Um, qualitatively, it feels better than what they released. Uh, the resolution and fidelity isn't quite as good, but I think this is just what they've selected and what they optimized for. But uh, in my opinion, the content is far more cohesive and it builds on some concepts I talked about yesterday about scene and setting interpolation and thinking carefully about the transitions between not just frames but scenes as well in terms of creating an experience which is a very amorphous idea even to people trying to create things like this in 3D. 
Uh, like even if you were going to sit down in Blender and say, okay, I want to make a bear swimming. It's going to go underwater. Perspective will change a bit. Then we'll come out of the water. So the, the composition process, um, I, I would call this less text to video and more text to video scene composition. Because this is not only just an object, it's, it's an entire scene with perspective layered in, which I think is pretty cool. And um, what this video will not be about, and some of you might look at this and say, it, it looks like there's some kind of active dithering going on. Uh, like in this video, clearly there's some dithering going on. What's, what's interesting, I, I read part of this paper, and that was actually not an intentional aspect of this. Uh, that was sort of inferred by the model after the fact, which is a, a kind of a cool aside. Um, and then the other thing that's kind of cool about this is the researchers that released this, uh, currently it's listed as anonymous. So they released this uh, initial publication and uh, you can go check it out at openreview.com. We're going to have a second video on this. Um, the paper is still pretty high level, but it gives a bit more insight into how they want some of this to work. Um, the most groundbreaking part of this is that they've focused on video past 15 seconds. There's actually a sample video that is two minutes long, and we're going to watch it here in just a bit. So um, they have interactive, interactive examples. This has been a recurring theme uh, in showcasing these new models. Um, I think it, it helps show that what, what they're showcasing is a little bit less cherry-picked, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and yeah, so there are a few primitives here. So we have HD video, someone riding a horse at sunrise. And note that these, if you're looking at these, these are not dynamically generated. These are just parts of a website looking at different images. Um, but again, you can see these are cohesive, complex scenes with or without a certain type of theme filter applied. Uh, that's not functionally how it works, but it's kind of a cool way to break this down. And uh, yeah, it's really, really good. It, you know, something that's hard to describe how hard it is to get right uh, is the notion of separating subject from scene from environment, especially when you have the environment interacting with subjects or multiple subjects. That's incredibly hard, and it's incredibly hard to even describe properly in a text prompt. And... Um, Again, you can see that there's sort of these deep zoom effects, uh, which have been popular. And the, the methods of producing these has been really pretty varied. And it's cool to see that they've taken a shot at that as well. Um, specifically here, obviously what they're talking about is generating video from a still image and then defining a progression of doing something with that image. So a cat, so, so zooming in or uh, the, the subject of the image itself doing something. So you're cheating a little bit in that you're giving it a hint as to what you want the subject to be, but you're still relying on the model to be good enough that it can tell what's in it. And yeah, so for instance, if you give it a picture of a rat and you'd say, zoom in on the cat, that's probably not gonna go too well. But what's cool here is you're playing off of the create creativeness and just playfulness of the model, which is a weird, like I never thought we'd get to a point where we'd talk about models in terms of how playful they are. Um, now, what I think is the most interesting part of this and why really this is far more impressive than what Facebook put out. Um, and also because Facebook has hundreds of people who they can give any amount of money to do this, right? So what I think is really cool is there are a number of two minute videos that showcase, and granted there's a, there, this is a very verbose description uh, and you could say, well, you know, linearly, you could separate this out by saying each sentence is a distinct scene. Then the model just has to figure out um, how to transition between the scenes. Or you could take an approach that you could, you know, also use with something as simple as FFmpeg, where you just generate a bunch of scenes and then interpolate transitions between them, which at some level is probably what's going on here. However, um, it's cool because it shows how you could create mid to sort of longer form content with uh, an AI. So again, me calling this text to longer form uh, scenes or environmental video. Uh, yeah, so that's all they're willing to show right now. It's pretty brief, um, but I think it, it, I'll, it wouldn't do them justice if we didn't sort of at least 
skim the abstract. So Finicai, again named after the Finisticope, um, a model capable of realistic video synthesis given a sequence of textual prompts. So not a single prompt, but a sequence of them or a sequence, a sequence of sentences. Uh, they note they talk about generating videos from text is particularly challenging. Well, of course it is due to the computational cost, limited quantities of high quality text video data and variable lengths of video. So what they're sort of getting into here is that you know, they're saying we didn't use a bunch of a large corpus of existing data to do this. We're doing this with a diffusion model and um, we're using a text synthesis. So to address the issue, we introduced a new casual model or sort of a, a lazy approach to learning video representation, which compresses the video into a small representation of discrete tokens. So this is what I meant by looking at sentences, creating scenes, and then merging them. So I would loosely think that they're, they're probably tokenizing bits of the description and then going through it. Uh, so, it, so then again, which allows it to work with variable length videos to generate video tokens from that. We are using a bi-directional mass transformer, which is the real meat of all this, conditioned on pre-computed text tokens. So that's what they're training on. Um, the generated video tokens are subsequently detokenized to create the actual video. To address data issues, we demonstrate how joint training on a large corpus of image text pairs, as well as a smaller number of video text examples, so they're, so they're cheating a little bit here, can result in, general, in generalization beyond what is available in the video data sets. So they're saying we used some, but we're not solely relying on that. Compared to the previous video generation methods, Finikai can generate arbitrarily long videos conditioned on a sequence of prompts. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first time a paper studies generating videos from variable prompts or time variable prompts. In addition, the proposed video encoder decoder outperforms all per frame baselines currently used in the literature in terms of spatio temporal quality and number of tokens per video. Um, so I want to look into what spatial, spatio temporal quality is. I haven't seen that before. So now what I want to show you guys is um, the full two minute video they have. So you start in this scene here, then you have kind of a, a so there's a transition. Curiously, a transition involving a subject. Um, I think what's curious is you see that the perspective of a lot of this is consistent between scenes. I'm not sure if that's done deliberately, but you're always facing forward and there's not too much rev like revolving around subjects, which I think is something this model might struggle with. Okay, the fish in the background. So we jump to the fish and, you, and you'll see that a lot of these transitions happen when there's a similarity in foreground or background going into a subject in the next scene. So fish to fish, uh, water to water or water surface to water surface. And I think, I think that's pretty interesting. Um, so city, we're now going into a, a building in the city, a window in the city. Um, that's a kind of scene we've seen done before, kind of the infinite zoom interpolation. You know, there's an office in, oh, that's cool. Now this is cool because that, that, was, a, that was a pretty random transition. You know, a lion on a boardroom table. That's that's cool. Okay, the lion's face. That's cool. A lion in a suit. Okay. Boardroom lion. And all right, still going. Still going. Oh, and zooming out. Again, back office to building to city, and that's it. So yeah, I thought this was cool. Um, I initially saw this and thought, well, that's a pretty big claim that they're doing this. Um, it's also just kind of cool that the group doing this is anonymous for the time being. It'll be curious to see where they formally sort of you know, present this and uh, 
yeah, so I hope this was interesting to you guys, sort of a, co a cool historical background. Again, uh, we don't have a name for it yet. Uh, so if, if you'd like to suggest a name for the service we're putting together to automatically sign you up for generative AI betas and give you an edge when you do sign up, uh, drop a comment below or send us an email. And I hope you have a good rest of your Friday. If you're not watching this on a Friday, good luck with the rest of your day or week. And we'll talk to you soon.